Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for finding Mental Shift. My name is Michelle Moross, and I'm your host. If you accidentally ran across this podcast, great, you're in the right place. If you found me because you are uh, sharing and people share it, that's even better. So continue the trend, share, like, and keep reposting. Uh, Mental Shift, what is this about? Well, we have interesting people doing interesting things. And what they do, if we talk about is what happened in their life to have them shift to do what they're doing now. And most of the time, people are out doing more for other people and growing exponentially, things of that nature. I I have a lot of people come on and um, please check them all out. So today, we have a really wonderful woman and I accidentally met her on a um, author's get together online right after COVID hit. And her name is Sarah Hart, Sarah B. Hart. But (laughs) her website, you might want to look it up right now. It's www.primesparkwomen.com. And we'll be talking more about that because that's her second book. But she is a speaker, a coach, a consultant, a two-time author. And her second book is the name of the website I just gave you. So that kind of helps you out. Her second book is Prime Spark, Women Over 55. It's our time. I like that a lot. So please welcome Sarah. Thank you, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, I've seen you online, but... Yeah, but we didn't get the talk talk. That's right. That's exactly right. No, I, when I met you on that call, I'm like, when I heard the women over 55, it's our time. I'm like, yeah, baby. So here's the thing. Tell me a little bit more about this because it's your quest. It's your, it's your passion. What it you? is my passion, Michelle. Um, I, I get so fired up about it that um, it, right now people don't walk away from me because nobody is with me but um before we were (laughs) all locked down (laughs) people would listen for a while and then say yeah that's great gotta go now you know because you know um yeah so it 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 is um it is really my focus and my mission right now i um realized from a couple of things that happened to me uh that our this is not a secret but our culture is not good with how it sees and treats older women. We become old women. And at, we become, at 35 or old women. At 35 or older. Uh, we become invisible, we become irrelevant. Um, and if you look at ads, a lot of ads in magazines are showing older women who are receiving help in one way or another. And if you look at older women, um, that's not who we are anymore. Maybe we never were, but we certainly aren't now. We're vibrant, we're alive, we're out there, we're desirable, we're making it. And so I thought, this is not okay. This has got to change. So the mission of Prime Spark is to change the way our culture sees and treats older women. So that is the big mission which means we got to get going because as older women, we've got a lot of years ahead, but we don't have endless years ahead. So we got to move now and we got to get then younger women involved with us because they are going to be older women and they want their lives to be full and active just like we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and I used to always giggle about that because you'd see the commercials and they do, if you have lines and wrinkles, please, you know, use this cosmetic, blah, 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 blah. And they always use like a 20 year old. I'm like, okay, she doesn't have any. (laughs) You might want to bring my butt on. I mean, and I, I laugh about how they use age, like in movies. Over the age of 40, they, they're using 70-year-old women, you know, and, and under the age of 40, they're using 18-year-olds. And it's like, what is that middle part? Where are we? We're gone. We're, we're erased. And you're right. right. I, I love that prime spark concept because we are. We're, invis- we're the invisible age. We're the invisible age. And we are, and, and I say this to people and they look at me like I'm nuts, but when women are 50, 55 and on, they're in their, we're in our prime. We're in our now, prime. That didn't used to be true. But at the beginning of the 1900s, we gained 30 
extra years of adult life. So we have an entire adult lifetime ahead of us at 55. And so we're in our prime. And so the, the prime spark is to find that spark deep inside us that if we can find it and ignite it, it will light our way into the world and make the difference that we can make at this point in our lives. I love it. Uh, so many of my clients uh, over the age of 45 are in that, that brink where they're like, something's changing, something needs to be done. And when they hit the 50 mark, you know, those clients are like, I'm ready. Let's do this. I yeah. mean, there's no fear. There's no inhibitions. There's no, what are people are going to think about me? When we're in that 55 range, we're done caring about what people are pointing at for us. And it's like, I want to be me. Let me be me. Yep. And that is for some women, the first time in their life, they've actually been able to have, to feel that way. They've been responsible for um, partners and children and everybody's schedule and finances and homes and big jobs all at the same time. Yeah. And now it's okay. Now it's my time and I'm going. It's almost like a rebirth. Yeah. It's a rebirth because it's finally like I've been spending so much time taking care of everybody else that my kids are out of college, you know, and my, my parents are much, much older that, or not here at all anymore. And I'm not caring for anyone but me. And right. at first it's kind of scary. And then it's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Watch out world. Right. Wow. We're, we're, right. uh, this age is such a powerful age because we, we aren't held back by all the what ifs and what, what happens and what do people think. So it's, it's very empowering. And so I, I love this. I love this women, women over 55. It's our time. Thank you. Me too. I'm excited. <laughs> well, I have to, I want to go backwards because we started on your second book. What's your first book about? My first book is called um, The Upside of Downsizing, Getting to Enough. Um, three years ago, I went through a huge downsizing of my home and moved into a very small apartment. And it was hard. It was really hard. And so I started writing about it just to get myself through it. And I thought, well, I wonder if this would be helpful to other people. So what it is, it's about the emotional side of downsizing your home, not the practicalities, not the donate cell piles, you know, whatever, although I talk about that a little bit, but it's how it feels to get rid of things that you may have had for the last 40, 50 years that you have had in this house that you're now moving out of. Um, you're getting rid of things that your children may have had. You, many, especially women, have things their children had clear through school. They have report cards, they have medals, they have, yes, they have graduation tassels, they have, you know, they have endless things. Their children's favorite toys. That's one of the things that's really hard to get rid of. And so, and you have memories. I mean, think of the things you did in this house with your partner, with your children, with your friends, with your extended family. And so you're, you're getting rid of, I, well, I got rid of about 80, 90% of what I owned because I was moving into such a much smaller place. So it's about the emotional side of what that's like. And um, the, the title, The Upside of Downsizing, Getting to Enough, since the mid 90s, I've had a personal project called The Sign of Enough. And it's designed to help us answer the question, how will I know when I have enough? Because in the mid 90s, I started getting really concerned about, that was during, that dot-com boom. And um, for people who were living in California then, it was an explosion of tech yeah. little companies and guys primarily at that point who were overnight millionaires. And then after they went through their first company and sold it and made millions and millions, they built huge houses that we called McMansions. Yes. And they had cars to die for and every tech thing in your their house you could think of then they got bored 
And so they turned around and started another company. And I remember reading about this in the newspaper. And I said to myself, golly, you guys, how will you know when you have enough? Mm. And I just stopped. I remember where I was sitting. I remember the coffee shop I was sitting in in San Francisco. And I remember just stopping and saying, well, how will any of us know when we have enough? And so that has stuck with me over the years. And it is really in my consciousness right now because um, we have such a disparity between haves and have nots in this country. And we're living it, man. I mean, you know, it's in our face. And so I've gotten, I just said, so I just over the years got more and more concerned about the, what we're doing to the environment, what we're doing to our souls, what we're doing to other, other, others of us in this society and in the world. And so when I came to my own downsizing, I realized, oh, I have an opportunity to discover what for me is enough. And so this, the subtitle, Getting To It, that's where the subtitle, Getting To Enough, comes from. And the book um, actually became a bestseller on Amazon in its category, so that was very exciting. And I've gotten wonderful feedback. Uh, I get emails from people I don't know telling me how much the book has meant to them, and they don't know what they would have done without it. And they're, what's better than that? There's nothing better than that. You there know? is. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, you know, as writers and, and, and coaches and speakers, we just want to touch one, just touch right. one heart, one soul. That's right. when, you, when you get those kind of messages, it's like, I did it. It, it worked. It, 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 it I'm, worked. I'm, I'm making I, a difference. Yeah. yeah. So I just, um, as you know, Michelle, I just um, um, was able to get onto Amazon, the Audible. So the audio is now out and I'm listening to it. <laughs> it's real, so weird to hear your own voice. <laughs> to yourself reading your, your own book. And my cat looks up and he tries to find who's, who's Sarah. talking. That sounds like Sarah. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> so, so that was my first book. And I did um, a number of book readings and signings, and that was really fun, and I enjoyed that. And that's not happening now, of course, but I've done some readings online, and that's really fun. But you know, it's not the same as having live people sitting there that you're talking to, but it's better than nothing. It so, is, it's better than nothing. I mean, in yeah. sharing your story and sharing your, your thoughts with people in a physical space is very special. That energy is different, but. This virtual one is nice because we can reach further than the people who are actually in the room with us. So it's it's different and good. It's different and good. And plus, it's our time, right? It's our time. And I cannot imagine, for as much as sometimes I've railed against technology, and still do sometimes, I can't imagine what this time would have been like without Zoom. Exactly. I just had a talk uh, right right about when COVID first started. People were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I do stop. If this happened 10 years ago, we wouldn't yes. have this. We would be writing letters. Oh, and then we would have overloaded the system, the postal system, and that would have shut down on us. And we would all be alone in our houses. So be very thankful yes. for all of these online platforms, even Facebook with their video thing that they had that now they've got meetings. I mean, so everybody has something to reach right. out. Can you imagine what it would be like without technology? So although I was complaining about technology doing something crazy for me earlier today, I'm very thankful that it, we have it because I couldn't do my podcast without these because I used to have people come and sit next to me. We'd have our, you know, we'd be on the screen together and it's like, how do, how am I going to do this? Right. And Zoom works perfect. Right. So I, I wouldn't have been able to meet you if it wasn't for Zoom. <laughs> Yay, right. Zoom. We just, we just promoted you. Yay, Zoom. We just, we just promoted you even though we were railing against you just before, but um Good and bad and every technology. Yeah, fix it or don't mess with it. Yes, that, that's right. If it's working, don't mess with it. Yeah. Now, if you want to find more with uh, about Sarah and the work she's doing, go to primesparkwomen.com. She also has a blog that uploads into her Facebook page because that's how I've been tracking on her. And shh, you don't know that. But she also has a blog. So if you're a woman 
honestly, I'm not going to say a woman over 55 because every one of us will eventually, more than likely, if we're lucky, be above 55. So <laughs> if you're a woman, you want to read this. And if you're a man who loves a woman or a woman who loves a woman, you've got to read it just because it's, it's part of who we are. When I give uh, talks, Michelle, I say that, uh, for women over 55, for those of you in the audience who are not 55, you will be. <laughs> if you're lucky, you will be. Hopefully you, hopefully you will be. And um, so we want to build the world that you want to be in when you're turned out of those ages. So, yeah. And I have also heard people talk about that when they've read some of the things about Prime Spark, that it applies to everybody. You know, it's, um, we're talking about ways our society is not positive about older women well think of all the people our society is not positive about and so i have to say they do the same thing to what how how they talk about millennials yes all oh, those millennials da, da, da. i'm like um all the millennials i know are pretty darn productive so i don't know what you're looking at but what i'm seeing is pretty amazing so yeah it's the generalization is what you're you're right. you're, you're rallying against with this is right. it's not just women over 55 yes this is the focus because uh, that's where we are, right? That's where we are. But it, it applies to all because there's that generalization that happens in media that doesn't apply. And then we all get this thing in our heads that I, I remember when I was 20, I thought at 40, I would have grandchildren and um, I'd have full gray hair and I wouldn't be able to walk or do anything. I mean, really, that's what right. it had said. 40 year old women was like Aunt May from. Um, Leave it to, not leave it to Beaver. Oh, shoot. I just forgot the name of it. But the Andy Griffith Show. And she was probably only 45, but they made her look like she was 80. And so I remember thinking, that's what I'm going to be like when I'm 45. And I'd be making pies and I, would, I wouldn't be doing much more. You know? have to sit down a lot. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. I'm hiking more at 50 to 52 than I've ever done in my life. So who, who wrote this stuff? <laughs> it's, um, it really is sobering because those build the assumptions we have about ourselves so that young women still assume that's what's going to be like to be older because that still is mostly what they want. They, that's mostly what they see. Um, and the, whenever I talk about this, people will say, oh yeah, but look at this woman and look at this woman. And they can name about three or four women that are really uh, incredible. And that's wonderful. But what about the rest of us, you know? Um, just because there are two or three or four incredible women in the media, it doesn't take us all in because they're so incredible. And yeah. so- And um, vice versa. <laughs> right. right. Vice right. versa. I mean, I've met people, I'm a big karaoke fan. I love to sing, sing loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I was at a karaoke bar and I'm singing around and this young woman comes up to me and she says, man, you're a dada. And she thought I was closer to her age because I was out there. And when she said, I told her, I said, how old do you think I am? And, and when I told her, she says, you're older than my mom. You're That's old. Crazy. I mean, her whole face changed, but you're old. I can't be around you. You're old. I'm like, wait a minute. Like three seconds ago, we were having a great time. And once you know my age, you suddenly think, I, I need to be cared for and I need to sit down and, you know, where did that come from? And, and I, I remember when I, right before, I think I was like 48, I was told, oh, you're gaining weight. You're, you're 50. It's okay. Oh, you're going to start aching and painting because you're 50. What does the number have to have anything to do with what I, I'm capable of? or not capable of. And so it was really weird to see me reach an age beyond the age I thought was old when I was in my 20s, to go beyond it and look at it and do, I'm not old right. yet <laughs> or ever. Yeah. Or ever, or ever. I mean, it's, it, we all get older if we're lucky, as you say, if we're lucky, we all get older. But we don't have to be old. Now, there certainly are people who have significant health problems, and that's different. I mean, and, and that's, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but for people who don't have serious health problems, 
if you just stay active and stay out there and stay involved and be contributing and feel useful and feel needed and, and keep social networks, you don't have to be old the way we've defined old ever. I, say, I, met, I met a lot of really old 20 year olds too. So <laughs> it's like, wake up, wake up. I can't, I can't remember what age she used. So I'll make this up. But uh, you may remember when Jane Fonda was like 65, I think, or, or some age, I can't remember. And somebody said to her, they don't look 65. And she said, this is what 65 looks like. So for you, you could have said to that young woman, this is what 52 looks like. As I said, I said, <laughs> if you're wondering what I'm doing, for those of you who are listening, I'm doing that whole face thing. <laughs> own it, own it. Well, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily, when people say, oh my gosh, Sherry, you don't look your age. I feel a little bit like when I lived in the UK for, I lived in the UK for five years, and I don't know what there was about me or my accent or what, but people thought oftentimes that I was from Canada. And so they would, then they would find out that I was from the United States and they would say, oh, I thought you were from Canada. And they thought it was a real compliment to me for them to think I was from Canada rather than the United States. And I remember thinking, that's really interesting. So I feel a little the same way when people are shocked about how old I am, I think I worked very hard for these lines and I don't necessarily want you to think I'm a lot younger than I am. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily a compliment. It's just what is. It's like, yeah, I've struggled. I, I've had a lot of meetings, you know, it's like I, I worked hard to get here. It's okay for me to have a few wrinkles. It's okay for me. Now, in my culture, I mean, I'm, I'm half black, half Filipino. And so in my Filipino culture, when I walk in, I feel very old looking because the Asian side of me looks like they never age. I mean, my mother looks like she's, she'd be younger than me. So it's like, wait a minute, mom's like almost 80. It's like, really mom, can you can't at least get over 45 just, just for a little bit. <laughs> but you no, know, the power is in the confidence. If, for those of you who are listening, you're like, these ladies are going a little nuts on this. No, watch the women that you know over the age of 50, 55. We have come to an awakening and we stand differently. We, we walk differently. We command a room differently because it's, we, we're tired of protecting our, our ego. We're done with it. Yeah. And we come into who we are. And so social media and media, TV, movies, whatever you all are doing, recognize all these amazingly beautiful, strong women who are not the 80 year olds, you're, you're, you make them look older. That was who I was thinking of, Edith Bunker. She was oh, in her Edith 30s, Bunker. Oh, remember? She was in her 30s as Edith and they made her look like she was in her 60s. And so that's where our misconception are, these stories, these movies we saw as children, or now when we're watching movies and they're like, um, is a general in the air in in the in the military, and this is his twenty year old wife, and she's supposed to be you know fifty. And you're like, okay, I, I'm supposed to be that. <laughs> I'm, that's not me. I mean, and so it's really weird to see the juxtaposition of how time has changed. They used to make us look incredibly old when we weren't, and now that we're, I don't know, they use much younger women to play older women. And so the 20 year olds are really 12. The, the, the 30 year olds are acting like they're, they're 50. It's like, stop the madness. <laughs> Just let us be. Let us be what we are. Let us be who we are. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, I think that part of this, and uh, really younger people hate to hear us talk about this, but there's this huge bubble of baby boomer women coming along and, um, you know, we're not going to sit down and knit. Well, I mean, we might sit down sometimes and knit, but I mean, that's not what we want to do. It's, it's, it's not who we've been, and it's not who we're, we are, and it's not who we're going to be. And so it is, yeah, just, I think that, that what, what we need to encourage people to do is look at reality. 
Look around you. Around you. Just look at people. Look how women that you know are in their 50s. Are they creaky and, and bent and, and old? And sure, some of them may be, but mostly, most are not. no. Mostly, no. No, we're not. We're, we're ready to go, and we're ready to make a difference, and we're ready to say, stop it. No more. And we're it's tired awesome. of hiding in other people's shadows. Yes, absolutely. That's right. So tell us a little bit more about your book. If someone picked it up or picked up, oh no, the audio is for your first book, right? Okay. <laughs> but if they picked up your, your, um, your current book, your second book, The Prime Spark One, right. what would they expect from that? Um, well, they can't pick it up yet because it hasn't been published, but it is just on its way to being published. And so, it, huh? I said it will be. It will be, yes. It will be out, I, I hope, by the end, at least by the end of June, maybe before. Oh, see? So this podcast will come out the same time your book comes out. Cool. Oh, uh, let me. Prime Spark, women over 55, it's our time. I love it. So that's just, that's just a word doc, so it's not very good, but there will be a real cover. It is, what it actually is, Michelle, is a workbook. Okay, that's what I was after. Is it a storyline or is it a no, workbook? No, it's, it's actually a workbook. And what it is, is um, it's, a, it's some writing, and then there are um, 30 questions, and then there's some writing. Okay. And what it's designed for is for women to work through for 30 days a question a day okay. and they're designed to help us get in touch with you know what really sparks us what do we really want next what do, where do we see ourselves going what difference do we want to make at this point in our lives and my my goal is to have um, groups of women online work through the workbook together oh so you're going to do masterminds and all yeah, because I think it's I think it's a it's a group activity. I mean, groups wouldn't answer the questions, but but uh, we would do I, something like six weeks with a, a a meeting a week and talk about the five questions for that week and which question was most important of which women. That's well, what I did with my book. It's not luck. My book. Um, it's not luck. I did it as a mastermind. I only allowed twelve women in at a time, and we met once a week. And we worked on a chapter a week. And then as they got question, uh, got really deep, it's like, okay, let's extend it. So these are getting kind of difficult. Let's make it every two weeks so that we can work deeper into these questions. And it's phenomenal. Uh, it, it's much needed because when we write these books, um, we're, we're thinking ahead. And so when people start getting to these questions, they do, whoa, that's really deep. I need right. to think more. Well, with us, since we've already done it, we do oh yeah, we can go through that and go to the next one. They do, whoa, whoa, stop. I need a little more time to digest. <laughs> and that's what I learned with my book. It, it's a fabulous process and uh, the, the groups loved it. And it, it was wonderful to see the eyes light up and do, I got this. Cool. It's, it's lovely. I can't wait to hear your, for your process on that and uh, how it works out for you. Yeah. But uh, what was I going to tell you? There was something else I wanted to say. Well, oh, actually, you know, can I just say one thing as a follow-up to what you just said? What, what I actually see long-term, and um, it, it may not be me, it may be others uh, who take it forward, but I see it as a movement. I mean, we, we, we did this already once. In yes. the 60s and 70s, we had that, that women's movement and changed the role of women in our culture um, and it was hard we're not done but we've done it and so we need to now going forward however many years we need to do it again and so well you need to reach out to Jamie Lee Curtis Jamie Lee go oh, yeah remember when she put out all those pictures of this is me and she just stunning no makeup just black and white and just her raw oh, I was like oh my gosh she's just amazing i love it but yeah she was doing it because you know fighting the whole hollywood stereotype is okay you're over this age you've got to be a great grandma now uh yeah reach out to her <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot yeah she's amazing what was i going to tell you oh that's what i wanted to ask you about with your books you the first book was the upside of downsizing 
and getting to enough. And you said it started with the, how will you know when you have enough? And I was thinking, what a, it ties to this. It ties to your second book. Yes. Because of the, the pulling away and the discarding of the past and the things that were weighing you down and coming into this new age of, of womanhood, of right. truly being you of letting, oh yeah, I just got chills. Yeah, I just realized it while I was talking. I, I didn't realize that myself, but somebody uh, some time ago pointed that out to me, said, Sarah, your first book is letting go of stuff. And now this book is stepping into what's next. Exactly. And um, I got chills, I just got chills again. Um, and I hadn't realized that, but yes, that's, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly what happened. That's so beautiful. Yeah, um, thank you. And I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to get onto my podcast with me so we can share this movement that's coming because yeah. it, it's, it's inching around. It, 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 you can feel it. It's there. Already. I think so. I think so. I mean, some of the time in some of the writing I've done, it's um, we're on the cusp of, of a social movement. Can you feel it? I can. And I believe that. I know that sounds melodramatic, but I think it's true. I think that's it's true too. There's something moving. That's and, right. And it's not a terrible thing. It's just moving and it's scary and beautiful at the same time. Well, it will, it will like any kind of change, it will scare a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it can be scary to, to us. I mean, it was okay. So we're going to take on the mantle of this. What does that mean? What do we take on? What do we give up? So, you know, it's okay to be scared. <laughs> Very good. It means yeah. moving. I and I'm all for change. You know, stepping out of your your comfort zone is always scary, but it's yeah. it's worth it once you move. The growth the growth alone is amazing. Yeah. So, Sarah, we're coming to the last minutes of our time together. I'm so glad we had this time together. Um, but what is your what words of wisdom would you like to leave with the audience for them to you know? Hold on to and then reach I out. would yeah, I would say it's our time. Let's go and never give up and never stop and step into being fully who you can be, even if you're 85. Be who you can be now and take it out into the world because the world has never needed older women's wisdom and courage and experience and skills as much as it does now. And we need to take it out there and make a difference. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous words to, to end with because it's our time. If you're today, we've been talking to Sarah Hart, and if you'd like to reach out to her, she's at www.primesparkwomen.com. You'll find her blog there, and then you'll find both of her books very, very soon. The first book is Upside of Downsizing, uh, Getting to Enough, and then the second book is Prime Spark, Women Over 55, It's Our Time. Please reach out to Sarah and look for her audiobook because it is out and she did it because her beautiful voice is on it. And have a fabulous week, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. If you have listened and you liked it, you watched and you liked it, and you want to connect, you want to share, please like, share, subscribe to the YouTube page and go find Sarah Hart. Have a fabulous week, everybody. And until next time, be the best version of you. Bye, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.